Hi everyone! Today, you are going to conduct experiment 3. This experiment is divided into three parts. The first part is reproductive system. In reproductive system, you are going to observe male pelvic model, female pelvic model and the model of ovary. After that, you are going to observe spermatogenesis process in the testes of mouse. Let's go! Testis is surrounded by scrotum. Inside testis, there are seminiferous tubules coiling up. Sperm is produced inside seminiferous tubule and then transferred into epididymis by pressure of testicular fluid. From epididymis, sperm will travel to vas deferens that run upwards to the pelvic cavity and pass above the urinary bladder. You can see here, seminal vesicle is located at the back of urinary bladder. Each vas deferens empties into the short ejaculatory duct which passes through the prostate gland and merge into the urethra. Function of vas deferens is to convey live sperm from epididymis to the urethra. You can see prostate gland and bulbo-urethral gland here, which they are a type of accessory gland. Urethra is a tube that conducts urine and semen at different times. Penis contains the urethra as well as three cylinders of spongy erectile tissue. Penis will enable sperm to be inserted into female reproductive organ. You can see here structure number 9 is the ovary and structure number 8 is oviduct. Moving downward, you can see a uterus. Inside of the uterus, there is a layer called endometrium. The opening of uterus is called as cervix. And finally, you can see a vagina. Vagina is the female organ of copulation. you can see, this is a model of ovary that, that is available in the lab. If you look carefully at number 8, this is a primary follicle. Inside a primary follicle, you can find a primary oocyte. Primary follicle will grow bigger. The primary oocyte inside the primary follicle will also divide it into secondary oocyte and polar body. You can see that the follicle is growing bigger and it is uh, growing to the edge of the ovary. And during ovulation, the secondary oocyte will be released into oviduct and the adjacent wall of ovary will be ruptured. Secondary oocyte that is released is surrounded by granulosa cells and it is still at metaphase 2. Um, secondary oocyte will swept into the fallopian tube by the current created by fimbriae. Inside the oviduct or fallopian tube, the secondary oocyte have a greater chance to be fertilized. This is how seminiferous tubule looks like under the microscope. In this diagram, you can see there are two seminiferous tubule. This is the first one and this is the second one. And you can see there are connective tissue located outside of the seminiferous tubule. This is a Leydig cell that is responsible to produce testosterone. In this seminiferous tubule, 
you can see that the spermatogenesis begin from the outermost part towards the lumen. If we look at this diagram, you can see that there is a larger cell which is primary spermatocyte and then there is a slightly smaller cell which is secondary spermatocyte and then you can see a darker cell that is very small this is spermatozoa so you are now at the second part which is endocrine system in this part you are going to observe endocrine gland inside ovary so let's go ovary have certain structure that are able to secrete hormone this is primary follicle and primary follicle have follicular tissue and follicular tissue are able to secrete hormone in ovary. This is the structure of secondary follicle. You can see that secondary follicle have fluid cavity and it grows very large near the edge of the ovary. The secondary follicle have layers of follicular tissue that is called as granulosa cells. Granulosa cells are also able to secrete hormone. If we zoom into the secondary follicle, we can see secondary oocyte. This secondary oocyte will be released during ovulation. After ovulation, the remaining tissue will be transformed into corpus luteum. Corpus luteum are also able to secrete hormone inside ovary. Still there? Good. You are now at the third part of this experiment, which is respiratory system. In this part, you are going to observe the model of respiratory system. Let's go. This is the human respiratory model. As you can see here, this is the trachea. Trachea have cartilage to keep this part open. Human have two lungs, the right lung and the left lung. Trachea is connected to the bronchi. Each bronchus branches into smaller bronchioles and bronchial is connected to alveoli. If you look at the right lung, we have three lobes here. The left lung, on the other hand, only have two lobes. At the down below, we have a muscle that is used to control breathing mechanism. This muscle is called diaphragm. All of this organ is protected by ribcage. Finally, we have arrived at the end of our virtual experimentary. In your discussion, you need to describe all structures and slides that you have just observed. Please relate them with their own function. That's all from me. Bye!